marker, soft sticks. So Jamal, one of the things I'd love us to start uh, with this conversation is help me understand where you came from, mm -hmm. your growing up, and how that has influenced who you've become. For me, I was born and raised in Harlem, uh, born in 1972. My mother was a bookkeeper for the New York City Housing Authority. She collected rent. And my father was a uh, NYPD officer. But before my father became an NYPD officer, he was a journeyman heavyweight boxer. He fought Larry Holmes and Ken Norton and sparred with Muhammad Ali. And um, so as a kid, I really got a chance to see the underbelly of professional sports. My mother put me in Catholic school for my whole entire first all the way to 12th grade. So I was one of the very few kids that had to ride the train with a blazer and a tie coming from my neighborhood. But as the train moved downtown, the train occupancy didn't look like me. It was people wearing a suit carrying a briefcase. And I was always curious of what was in the briefcase. And the briefcase to me, years later, represented my brain, pretty much. And I decided to utilize basketball and became a very good basketball in high school. So I had the criteria where I wanted a college coach that either coached in the pros or played in the pros or had ties to the pros, meaning the NBA. And I also wanted them to support my dream of carrying a briefcase. And being 17 years old, you don't know exactly what that actually means. Nobody told me what an entrepreneur was. So at that particular time, I chose the University of Kentucky. Coach Patino was probably, I would say, one of four Hall of Fame coaches that recruited me. He was the only Hall of Fame coach that didn't laugh in my face as a 17-year-old for wanting to carry the briefcase. So fast forward, we have meetings set up. I selected an agent. And then um, business managers came in one at a time. Three of the four only wanted to talk about their portfolio, their returns, stocks and bonds, but they never listened to what I actually had to say. And one guy did. And um, his name is Rick Avar. And um, he was my business manager for the first year. And then after the first year, we became business partners. And um, we've been together for 26 years, um, having a great run. You said something that's really important. You said my uh, advisor became my partner. Yeah. That's critical for people watching this uh, that are in the financial advisor business. That's the relationship every advisor has to aspire to, is to not be the advisor, but to be the partner. First thing that uh, me and my business partner, Rick, did was we just sat at the table and just pretty much had a conversation of things that I would be interested in, meaning food, transportation, and real estate. First investment was in the um, restaurant sector, um, casual dining, and also is the automobile dealership business. And then also in the waste disposal business. And then also real estate, which connects it all. So those are the four sectors that I, I typically um, involve myself in. And, and that's how it started. It was just a, a, a general um, kind of uh, thought process, basically what people need. Uh, one of the things that, you know, uh, our iShares business is, a, is a, uh, a big believer in is to be highly diversified. And that's something that I think has probably led to, you, you know, you, you tell me, your success relative to many other athletes who maybe get too concentrated in one specific area. Yeah, I think most athletes get caught up in a couple of different sectors, being the uh, media and entertainment business because that's pretty much what they know and what they've been involved in. I tend to go more towards the businesses that you can operate, um, employ people, empower people, um, and also it seems to be more sustainable over a long period of time. And also I try to, I, just by attracting, I attract uh, antiquated industries where they're ripe for change at some particular point. And um, usually I'm pretty, pretty, uh, pretty spot on. I'm sure like you, you know, sometimes it's important for my kids to know that it wasn't a smooth ride, yeah. that we all have failure and yeah. we make mistakes. Um, describe some of the, the, you know, it's always tough to talk about the failures. It's great, yeah. easy to talk about the successes, but describe some of the failures too. Well, I missed a lot of shots in my day, you know, not only as a, as a player, but also as a business person. And one of my failures was in the automobile business when we first got started. Um, we were with a franchise um, um, that's very prominent, um, but we just didn't have the right personnel to engage the community. Uh, something that I use in parallel business and basketball for me is that, um, you know, every shot is just feedback. Even if you make the shot and miss the shot, it's just feedback. 
You know, I've learned that over time, you know, once it leaves my hand, I can't, there's nothing I can do about it. But if I have the right technique, um, uh, I've, I've practiced it and, and, and let it go, the result's gonna be the results. What's the future look like for Jamal Mashburn? I used to plan a lot um, when I was younger. Uh, this is what I wanna see. This is what I wanna accomplish. Now what I just do is I just continue just to work and um, find particular industries that I think are interesting uh, fit my personality. So for me, I think the future lies in, in a couple of things. First being um, um, waste management business. Um, I really enjoy that particular business. Um, it's a business that, uh, a service that everybody utilizes. It's not um, recession proof, but it's recession resilient in some regard. I still see myself involved in the car business. I also see that industry changing as well. Um, with technology and how people buy cars, what the expectation is of the customer. Something I invested in recently was a couple of properties in um, Bryce Canyon um, and then also up there in Utah. I think I really love the outdoor space and glamping. I think post-COVID, a lot of people are looking for more experiences and to be outdoor and to connect with one another. So I think that's going to be uh, future driven. You scored 11,000 plus points in your, in your career. And you were like, yeah, that's important. But what really uh, was more important to you was th the fact that you were a great man of giving assists. Talk to me about being a teammate. One of the great things about playing basketball for me was, as a young kid, is that I always wanted to share the ball. So my philosophy on basketball was, at a young age, I figured it out for me was, the most valuable thing in basketball isn't the actual ball. It's minutes played. So that's why I became a versatile player, so that I would have more opportunities. I'm more proud of that because that actually allowed me to score more. Because as I released it unconditionally, it unconditionally came back to me. People reveal themselves in physical activity of who they really are. And that's what I search for. I search for vulnerability, transparency, honesty, and authenticity which is a great place to end our conversation because that's, that's why I've been so inspired by you and that's why I'm so appreciative that you're sharing uh, your background, your experiences, your successes with, with our audience because it's, it's, uh, it's a rare quality to have all of those things you just mentioned in one human being uh, and it is why, uh, why I enjoy spending so much time with you, so thank you. It.